Hello, my name is Michael Tamaz with the RodHub Group, and I am a 20-year CCIE network architect, engineer, and trainer with corporate network experience in a senior level role for the past 20 plus years. In this video, I want to provide my Net DevOps portfolio for some of the major programming projects I have completed for customers and engineers focus around network automation. This could simply be with scripts that are run in a terminal window or through a web user interface based on a set of requirements by the business. So let me showcase many of these projects now. Starting out in this project, I created a web front end where a user can add the network devices in their environment and enable the specific features that they want to be configured with Python code on the backend. This network automation application was programmed using Python, Flask, JavaScript, and using YAML data formatted files. It supports many different network API or Python libraries, such as Nornir and a enhanced version of NetMiko that I personally created. Most of the projects that I work on today will be based on this framework with some customization based on the user's network environment. Let me provide a walkthrough of this application. Here on the main home or dashboard page, the customer will be able to add the devices by a unique name that they want to configure. There's also a section where they can select a previously added device, like switch number two, for example, for a number of selected tasks, which are shown here. They have the option of editing the properties of that device. They can delete it from the database on the system. And this section applies to specific configuration details they can apply the full network configuration that they specify to the targeted device. Or they may want to see a raw configuration that is not applied to that device and can show what that configuration syntax would be where they can copy and paste to their devices or learn from it as needed. There's also a section for a initial configuration. So if you're putting it in a new switch or a router, you may want to get a very simple initial config that needs to be applied first before the system can be able to manage it. And there's an option for performing backup configurations that you can view on a different tab. Furthermore, there are some canned monitoring or view commands that a business or an engineer can run. They can view the running configuration on the targeted device or look at the routing table, the VLANs, the interfaces, logs, or other commands that the customer might want. Furthermore, a customer may not want to apply the full configuration they may want to apply a particular set of configuration based on the feature. So for example, they may want to apply only ACO related configuration to that targeted device or NAT configuration, VPN and so forth, depending on what is supported on that device. Furthermore, the third section called operation task is how you'd be able to generate the necessary YAML files based on the properties defined for that targeted device that is necessary for network automation. So let's dive in for what the properties look like and what you can define. So let's say that I want to edit the properties of how switch number two is configured. So first, make sure that you select that device and then you go to edit and let's go ahead and say enter, let's confirm. And this is the format of what this looks like for each device. So each of these are all expandable. So I can go to main and fill in the necessary details of that device in terms of its device name, the group it's a part of, the appropriate platform name that is important, the domain name, time zone, and even a identifier, which can be used for certain parts of the configuration. There's another section for what is the role of that device, whether it is a standard switch, an internet router, WAN, primary core, and other conditions that can also be set based on customization or a requirement by the business, like for this particular client. This will also fill in the details of the management interface of the IP, username, password, and the interface, or what VLAN is being used that are added to the system. You can also specify the interfaces that you want to configure. It can be a VLAN, a physical port, or a range of ports, depending on what is supported on that targeted device. Furthermore, you can always add additional interfaces and you can specify the type of interface, which would be important. So I can say add interface and it can add additional interfaces by putting in the appropriate name and the type of interface that it will be. Furthermore, there's also a section here called features, and this will allow you to specify what features you want to enable or configure on that device as needed. And these are the current features that are supported with this particular project. 
So only the selected features will show up as additional options that can be defined here. So if I want to configure BGP routing, for example, I can check this and a new section will come up here where I can define those set of properties. And that is the general layout for the particular properties of how that device can be set up and defined. And very quickly, if I go to interfaces and we want to configure an SVI, a layer three VLAN interface, for example, then this is the actual structure that I can specify what is the connected interface type. Is it connecting to an access switch or some other kind of device? I can specify a description for that port. What is the IPv4 address or v6 if it is enabled in the environment? OSPF, EIGRP, and some of those properties relevant for a layer three interface of this type. Let's go back to the home page. So once again, if I want to go ahead and Go to switch number two. Let's say it's recently added. Again, I can build a initial configuration. So I can go here and based on the properties on the previous page with management, it will fill in what is the necessary syntax that I need to copy and paste to that device so that I can apply a configuration to that. So I can specify that task, do enter, say okay, and those results will be seen right here. It's that simple or again, getting a raw configuration. So I can select the device that I want, like router number one in this example. Let's go ahead and just view the raw configuration, do enter, and that will show the full raw configuration that would be applied either through this application automatically, through this option right here for apply configuration, or what you can simply copy and paste and apply to your devices. So there's a lot of configuration here for NAT, there's VPN, there's BGP, and this is what this application can support based on this customer's requirements. And lastly, there is a tab for backups. So if I go to here, all configuration backups that you do, you can click here and download those to your system. And these are also the backup files of this application that you can use to restore if necessary. So that is the breakdown of this network automation application that uses Python, Flask, JavaScript, and YAML data formats on the backend. Another project I created was considered as an earlier version of the network automation tool that I previously discussed. But this is another web-based application with a different approach for managing the configuration aspects for a network where everything is based on defining a profile object. This was also programmed using Python, Flask, and a lightweight backend SQLite database to store data. This project was mostly focused on just building the raw configuration that can be applied manually to your devices. It does have some simple network automation for applying a full configuration to a selected device, but this operation was replaced with this application, which is more widely used for many of my projects today. So let me provide a quick walkthrough for this application. Here you can add based on different clients that you may have. And the selected clients would appear over here on the top corner. So if I want to view or match configuration for a client called PAL, then I can simply check this, say select, and that option itself will change. I can also add new clients or delete them as needed. On the devices tab, this is where I can add devices or sites. And this will show the different type of objects. So this will view all things for sites and for devices. Now, if I say sites, this means a particular location. And if I click here, then that can give me the details of how that site is configured, such as what is the time zone and what is the role for that particular device. Is it headquarters or if it is a remote site? Plus the devices that are added into that particular site or location. I can also save and delete changes as needed. Where the devices is the particular details of how that device is managed. So if I click on one of these options here, then I can specify what is the role of that device, whether it is a core switch or an access switch, whether it is going to be an unmanaged or a managed device, what is the hardware based on what is supported by this application at this time, the model or the ports that can be defined on the system, and of course, what is the admin password. This will assume that the username is admin. Then it will show a breakdown of all particular interfaces based on that particular device and what profile is associated with that interface, whether it is a trunk port, a VLAN port, etc. And all these profiles are then defined on the profiles tab, which is probably the biggest part of the application. And this will show all different types of profiles and they're all color coded. 
So if I want to configure things regarding a network or VLAN, let's go there, then these are the VLANs or networks that are defined. So if I go to users, then it can specify the site, what is the subnet, the VLAN ID, and even the network type. Is it a data voice storage or management type of VLAN? Also, what translation profile, if NAT translation will be used in the environment. And this will reflect any SVI or layer three VLAN interfaces defined on the various devices for this client. Furthermore, let's close that out. Under interfaces, this is where I can define the different type of interfaces, such as a layer two VLAN interface, a layer three, maybe a trunk interface or port channel trunk interface. Those details can be defined here as well. And we have different profiles related with objects, like an address or a service object, different bundles that was considered for this particular project, NAT translations, routing, and other type of features as well. And then on the apply tab, this will use for building the raw configuration only. So I can select the particular device like course switch number one, and I can say view what that configuration would be. And that will show that raw configuration as well. That can be copied and pasted directly to that device based on everything that has been defined in the profiles and with the device and the interfaces on the system. Another project which was featured in our Python for Network Engineers 2 course was program using Python, Flask, and using a lightweight backend SQLite database to store data. In this web application, it is a simple IP address management tool that can be used for network documentation. Now this format and structure can be used in many different purposes where you can add, update, or delete data that is stored in a database. Again, this is a sample of another type of application I've completed for customers with a requirement of network documentation. Another project which was featured in another training course is using Ansible for network automation. This was set up using Ansible and all supporting files that include host, group, configuration templates, and playbook files. Many of our customers simply follow along in our course to build their own templates and playbooks to manage their network using a terminal interface. But I have also been involved with Ansible related projects to build templates and playbooks for network automation, utilizing many of the details used in my Ansible course for network engineers. And that is a summary of my portfolio of some of the major network projects that I have worked with in regards to network automation, DevOps, or specifically Net DevOps that I provided for customers, for businesses, and for network engineers and consultants. You can get more information at routehub.net and you can contact us at sales at routehub.com.